Hello, I'm John Woodring, and welcome to my session about the flip classroom. What is the flip classroom? Well, basically, it's a new way of doing school, where we kind of turn things upside down. Your primary instruction is now done at home, be it lectures, demonstrations, videos, such and as that. Then, your homework, projects, or anything else that you normally would have assigned students to do at home is now done in the classroom and under the guidance of the teacher. So what are the benefits of this arrangement? Well, students now have to start taking more responsibility for their learning. Also, because your uh, primary instruction is recorded, absent students don't necessarily get behind. They can go and watch these videos at home or when they come back. Also, the content that you have uh, created is now archived and can be reviewed by students whenever they need to for remediation or assessment purposes. This also will allow you increased interaction time with your students and a more personalized educational experience for them. Teachers become more of the facilitator. You're not chained up at the front uh, lecturing away to students who are bored, disruptive, etc. So what are some of the drawbacks of this? And there are some. First off, you will have to plan more classroom activities. Also, you will have to take some time to create any of the videos that you want your uh, students to see. Not all students are going to be able to see their videos at home. Now, there are ways around this, and we'll be discussing them during this session. Flip Classroom is a good option if your goals are you want content and idea exploration and creation. This is good stuff for the new Common Core standards that are coming out. Also, effective differentiation of instructional strategies can be achieved by doing this because you actually have time to do various activities and vary them amongst your uh, various levels of students within your class that period. This also allows more collaboration of students. This is one of the four C's that we've been talking about. The flipped classroom is not about replacing teachers. Don't worry, your job is safe. If anything, you're going to be even busier than you have been before. It's not an online video or online course. That's a totally different situation or different uh, way of doing instruction. And it's not students working without any structure or in isolation. No, the idea is, is more structure and probably definitely no isolation. You want those students to get together and do work. And it's not students staring at computer screens all during a class period. They should be looking at this stuff at home or at other times that you may have designated. I personally have used this in my classroom, although in a little bit different way than the traditional uh, flip way. But here are some of my observations. First off, right now is probably not for all students. Um, what I found out was students who are more used to traditional classrooms had a time adjusting to this new way. But once they got used to it, they did rather well. But there were some who just never quite got on at all. And it means they need to get used to the idea. They're used to the teacher getting up there, lecturing away. Now you're basically putting more emphasis on them. You're saying, go watch the videos, let's do this, and you need to do that. This can be disconcerting to a lot of students. One thing I definitely found out is especially if you do demonstrations, students have to be taught how to watch a video. Most of them are used to just watching a video all the way through as if it was a TV program, and they'd be done with it. They need to know that they can stop a video, they can rewind it, and play it as many times as you want. I always tell my students, the Mr. Woodring on the video is one who never gets tired or cranky whenever you want to ask him a question over and over again. And again, it did definitely allow for more collaborative learning. However, you better be warned, it will get awfully noisy in your classroom as well. 
and gave me lots of one-on-one -on -one time with my students. This was really a big help. What I found out was that in a lot of cases, I would have a group of students who pretty much could carry on by themselves anyway, and so I let them go with their assignments. Then I had a group of students who kind of knew what they could do, and they could work with other students who were more advanced, uh, and that's the cl good collaboration part, and then those who needed the extra help that gave me that extra time to work with them. And it also really shrank my class size, in a sense, down to something more manageable. Students definitely have more time to work on projects, and they have the resources to do those projects at the classroom when they may not have them at home. Believe it or not, I actually did, for the most part, have less discipline problems. A lot of times, students who will get in trouble during lectures because they don't want to see it, they'll watch the video, which is a lot quicker than trying to do a lecture, as you'll find out, and a lot of times those kids are they know pretty much what you're doing anyway, and they're just going to cause trouble. Now you've taken that out of the equation. So what tools are you going to need to get started? Well, it's fairly simple. You may want some screencasting tools, such as what I'm using now, which uh, records what you see on a computer screen. Okay, you're also going to need a way to distribute your video. And there's a variety of ways of doing this, depending on your situation. There's always the popular YouTube. Don't discount it. Yes, it may be blocked in school, but it's not blocked in the homes. And this is where a lot of kids go to watch a lot of videos when they are at home or at their friend's house or even on their phones or tablets. So you may want to put them there. You could also do SchoolTube if YouTube uh, is not something you're comfortable with. And personally, I like to use Edmodo. I can post my videos straight up in there. I can have them in the, uh, the Edmodo library. I can always put them in whenever I need them, uh, no matter where, actually where I'm at. So you might want to consider that option, and the students can see them just fine. There are sites in which some lessons have already been created for you if you're kind of wondering how to put together a lesson. Okay, We've talked about YouTube. There's lots of people who've already put things up there and that they're willing to have share or else they wouldn't have made them public. Again, SchoolTube is the same situation. But there's also things like the Khan Academy. This was a guy who started creating video lessons for a family member and it took off from there. It's becoming a very popular site for particularly math and science teachers to go to or to direct students to to get some instruction on various topics. They're also starting to branch out into different subject areas as well. And then there's good old iTunes U. Not a lot of people really know about this, but there's a wealth of information there. Uh, you just need to go and take a look. And there's the brand new TED-Ed. Just came out not long ago, and there may be some interesting things there. One thing they allow you to do is they actually encourage you to take their videos, download them, and mix them, edit them, do whatever you need to, to make them work for your class situation. Okay, you also might want a camcorder or a webcam. Your laptops in this district uh, have webcams, and so you might want to try getting used to doing those. So what are some tips for creating videos? Well, for one thing, keep things short. This video may actually run a little bit longer than I normally do. Ten minutes, and that should be it, maximum. Usually most of my videos are anywhere from two to three minutes. Make sure you break down large chunks of information. Okay, Even though you, they can stop and rewind videos, you kind of want to go and take it bit by bit so it would be easier for the students to digest what you're trying to teach them. And to make sure those students are actually watching your videos, you may want to end that video with a question. So, for more information, you can go to my class uh, or my website at johnwoodrin.com slash flipped. And here's a question for you. How do you see you using the flipped classroom situation for your class? We'll talk about this in just a few minutes.